Hey everyone, this video is on generators. A generator is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. This energy transformation is the opposite to that of a motor. A generator uses Faraday's law of induction to induce EMF and produce electrical energy in the form of current. The structure of a generator is similar to that of a simple DC motor. It consists of multiple turns of coil inside a magnetic field. This coil is then made to rotate in the magnetic field using some form of mechanical energy. As the coil rotates, the coil experiences changes in magnetic flux, and by Faraday's law, an EMF will be induced in the coil, hence producing current. In this video, we'll discuss two types of generators, an AC generator, which produces alternating current, and a DC generator, which produces direct current. In an AC generator, the coils are connected to slip ring commutators. The two ends of the coil are connected to a different slip ring commutator. Each slip ring is connected to the external circuit via a brush. The external circuit will then use the electrical energy produced by the generator. Unlike split ring commutators, slip ring commutators are always in contact with the corresponding brushes throughout the whole rotation of the coil. This setup allows the current produced to be an alternating current whose direction reverses every time the coil is made to rotate 180 degrees, that is half a revolution. Therefore, the frequency of the alternating current, AC, is proportional to the rotating speed of the coil. If the coil is made to rotate faster, then the frequency of the alternating current is also higher. The direction of current produced in a generator can be determined by applying Lenz's law. By way of review, Lenz's law states that the direction of an induced current will be such that the force produced will always oppose the change in flux, or the action that causes a change in flux. Suppose that the coil is made to rotate in an anti-clockwise direction as shown. When viewed from above the coil, side AB of the coil will move into the screen, while side CD of the coil will move out of the screen. The direction of the induced current will be such that the resultant force will oppose these two movements. Using the right-hand palm rule, where our fingers are pointing to the right in the same direction as the magnetic field in blue, our palm will be facing out of the screen, indicating the force direction. And this force direction will be opposing the movement of side AB. The thumb is a current direction, which will be pointing downwards. What about for side CD? The direction of induced current in CD will be such that the resultant force will be pointing into the screen because side CD is made to rotate out of the screen. Using the right hand palm rule again, our fingers are pointing to the right in the direction of the magnetic field. The palm is facing into the screen as labeled here. And as such, our thumb will be facing upwards, indicating the direction of the induced current. This results in a net direction of current that flows from D to C, C to B, and B to A. When this current flows through the external circuits via the slip ring commutators, it will flow through the galvanometer to the right as shown. After the coil is rotated by 180 degrees, side CD is now on the left side and AB on the right side. Now in this position, side CD is moving into the screen and AB is moving out of the screen. If we apply Lenz's law again, the induced current that flows through CD will want to produce a force that's directed out of the screen. And the current inside AB will want to produce a force that's directed into the screen. Again, the direction of these two forces will be so, so that they are opposing the motion or the movement of each side of the coil. This means the current direction will go from C to D and from A to B. The net current flow is now reversed, going from A to B, B 
E to C, and C to D. Since the contact between the coil and slip ring commutators has not changed, that is, the coil on side A is still in contact with the very first slip ring commutator, and side C, D is still in contact with the bottom, the second slip ring commutator, the direction of current flowing through the galvanometer is also reversed. Now it's flowing to the left. This is how its AC generator, through the use of slip rings, is able to produce alternating currents. In a parallel magnetic field, the rate of flux change is not constant. Magnetic flux changes sinusoidally, that is, it follows a sine function or a cosine function. When the plane of the coil is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, the flux felt by the coil is zero, as you can see by the graph here. But at this position, the rate of flux change is the greatest when the coil is rotating. When the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the field, the magnitude of flux will be the highest, but the rate at which it changes is zero. As the coil is rotated for one complete revolution, the flux will change sinusoidally and return to zero at the end of the first revolution. According to Faraday's law, the magnitude of EMF induced is proportional to the rate of flux change. At instances where flux is changing quicker, the magnitude of EMF is larger. For example, when the flux is momentarily not changing, this will correspond to a time point where the EMF is zero. When the flux is decreasing at the greatest rate, this will correspond to a positive EMF, because there's a negative sign in the equation, of the greatest magnitude. Conversely, when the flux is increasing at the greatest rate, the EMF again has the highest magnitude, but now it is negative. Let's look at how a DC generator operates. Similar to AC generators, DC generators are also an application of Faraday's law. A coil is made to rotate inside a magnetic field, and as this coil is experiencing a change in flux, an EMF is induced. And this EMF will produce electrical energy in the form of currents. A key structural difference between DC and AC generators is that in a DC generator, the slip ring commutators are now replaced by split ring commutators. These split ring commutators are also found in DC motors. However, in DC generators, their job is to maintain the direction of currents that flows through the external circuit, therefore producing direct current, DC. Like before, the direction of induced current can be determined by applying Lenz's law and the right-hand palm rule. When the coil is made to rotate anti-clockwise, the induced current flows from D to C, C to B, and then B to A. This current then flows through the split ring commutators and the brushes and through the galvanometer to the right as shown. A notable difference to pay attention to here is that the split ring commutators are not always in contact with the same brush. In fact, as the coil and the split ring commutators rotate, each commutator will be in contact with a brush on the same side of the motor. When the coil is rotated by 180 degrees, the direction of current in the coil is now reversed. Now it flows from A to B, B to C, and C to D exactly what happens in the AC generator. However, the split ring commutators have also switched position, and this allows the current flowing through the galvanometer to remain in the same direction. Although the current in the coil now goes from A to B to C to D, the current still flows through the galvanometer towards the right as shown. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Despite the reversal of current, in the coil, the direction of current flowing through the external circuits and the galvanometer remains unchanged. And this is how a DC generator is able to produce unidirectional or just simply direct current. The way flux changes in a DC generator is similar to that in an AC generator. Here, the flux also changes sinusoidally. 
The rate of flux change is the greatest when the plane of the coil is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field and becomes zero when the plane of the coil is perpendicular to it or when it's vertically oriented. However, since direct current does not change direction like alternate current does, the induced EMF due to the flux change remains positive in the DC generator. A simple way to understand this is to remember that the EMF versus time graph for DC generator is the absolute value version of that in an AC generator. Parts of the graph that are negative are flipped about the x-axis to form the graph for the DC generator. For both types of generators, the rotational speed of a generator determines the frequency of the EMF and currents produced. Increasing the rotational speed will increase the frequency. On the graph, this is depicted as a narrowing of the EMF sine curve. Furthermore, according to Faraday's law, the magnitude of EMF is proportional to the rate of flux change. So if the rotational speed is increased, there's a greater rate of flux change, which in turn induces an EMF of a greater magnitude. A larger EMF will produce a curve with a greater amplitude. Therefore, the rotational speed of the coil in a generator affects both the amplitude and frequency of the EMF and current that's produced. Let's compare the two types of generators. Both AC and DC generators utilize Faraday's law of induction to produce electrical energy. Structurally speaking, this is made possible by using a coil rotated inside an external magnetic field. However, as previously emphasized, DC generators use split ring commutators, whereas AC generators use slip ring commutators. Another important difference is that the current produced from an AC generator, that is alternating current, can be used with transformers, whereas DC generators are incompatible. I cover why this is the case in the video on transformers. Here's a diagrammatic comparison of DC and AC generators. The main difference is again, the type of commutators that are being used. The voltage in these generators varies sinusoidally, but for a DC generator, the direction of voltage and current will always remain positive and unidirectional at all times. This concludes the video on generators.